Good morning, beautiful people. It's Melanie coming to you from the Outer Banks, North Carolina. This is our sunrise this morning. I'll, of course, attach the more beautiful sunrise picture. But uh, I wanted to get on here and talk to you all about the power of change and the power that you have to make change if you, so do so, if you chose to do so. Hello, full moon in Gemini, I believe. Um, so I was a nurse, if you didn't know, for eight and a half years. Um, in 2016, someone told me to go vegan so I could stop being sick and tired, and I uh, just realized my hat's on inside out. <laughs> um, go vegan so I could stop being sick and tired, and it cured my incurable illness within 34 days. It started to cure it that I didn't need my medication anymore that was going to keep me alive. Um, I had doctors laugh in my face when for $1,100 for an hour um, to tell me that I could never go off my meds. That would never happen and I'd be dead if I did. Well, sitting here seven years later, obviously that didn't happen. And so when I started to cure the incurable illness, I realized that the medical system was a fraud. And I realized that the medical system was only in it for one thing, which is profit. And I no longer could... Um, I no longer could assign myself to profit from an industry that was profiting off of the health and illness and deaths of others. And so with all of that, look at these birds. I just have to, they're so freaking cute. And these little sandpiper things and they just hang out and they like take little baths in the water. <laughs> look at them coming, it's like a herd of little birds. Um, sorry, I know it's distracting. <laughs> <laughs> it's nature. So, um, I no longer could assign myself to an industry that was profiting off of humans and their ignorance. Truly, that's what's happening. And so I chose to step away. I made over $100,000 a year, y'all. Uh, they paid for my house, they paid for my car, and that was back in 2016. Um, I worked in high-risk specialty, which made it so that I was able to make that kind of um, financial abundance. Um, which was high risk labor and delivery. And so that's like a sought after, uh, field within the nursing community. Um, but yeah, so I was making a ton of money. I was no longer, I was no longer able to profit due to morals and ethics. They had obviously changed in the 10 years that, not 10 years, eight and a half years that I'd done nursing. So, um, it had been 10 years since I started nursing school, though. Uh, so, yeah, I said I would never go back. I tried to go back two more times just thinking that things might have changed. Um, once was a contract in Vegas because we really needed the money, but it wasn't worth it. And I came home in three weeks. And then the second time was in 2019 when I had to go back into nursing because I became a single parent and needed to support myself and my girls. And I went into hospice. And I was like, oh, I could just help people pass on. And then they were drinking their Coca-Colas at the bedside with their colon cancer. And I was like, I can't watch this happen anymore. <laughs> and so I went back into our work. Ooh, ooh, the sun's coming up. <gasps> Look at it. All right, so we, we got to keep this moving, right? We're going to watch the sunrise as I chit-chat, y'all. Um, so fast forward to 2023. And I can tell you that I have not taken my kids to a doctor in years um, for anything but a broken bone. I myself have not gone to the doctor since 2019 when I had a spider bite from the nursing home and ended up with a terrible leg infection from that. Um, knowing what I know now, I could have probably healed it, but knowing I didn't know enough then, so I took antibiotics, but that was it. That was the only times in seven years that I have used the medical industry until God gave me something that made it so I could no longer ignore the medical industry. And that was a daughter sick with type 1 diabetes. I cannot cure her myself straight up with juice cleansing like I can pretty much any other illness. <laughs> so now I've got to work with the medical industry. And so it's, it's, it has forced me back into that system. It has forced me to go back into that system whether I wanted to or not. I said never would I return. That anything I could get given, which I never thought it would be type 1 diabetes, I could heal on my own. Which I still believe that I'm going to have some 
big findings within this because I'm very motivated. Um, I don't want her to be a slave patient for life. I don't want to be her slave patient mother for life. And I know that there's something out there that's going to fix this. I just have to find it. And if the $3 billion people can find it, then I'm going to find it too. <laughs> but until then, I've been put on a mission. And I've been put on this divine mission by God. I truly believe that. Because it takes somebody like me to make change. It takes somebody like me that doesn't give a shit what other people think. It takes somebody like me that has a voice and the knowledge and the wisdom and the background to actually stand up and say no more. And so about two weeks after she was diagnosed, I finally had the energy to call. And I called the hospital and they got me in touch with the director of healing and or, um, health and nutrition services at the hospital, at the children's hospital. And so um, I called him and I left a message and he called back pretty pretty quickly. I was very impressed. Um, when he called back, I said, I explained my situation. I explained that while my daughter was in the ICU, I had to go grocery shopping because they didn't have food to be able to feed her at the hospital that was acceptable according to my, my standards. And, um, he said, well, there's people there that'll go out and get you stuff. And I was like, yeah, but like it, being told I needed to go do that. Like, I didn't even know what I needed. I needed to go look at stuff. Like I needed to go read my labels and um, I said, this is inappropriate that you have not healing foods in a hospital at all. She was handed menus with sausage, egg, um, sausage, egg, a piece of toast, a box of raisin bran, and called a low-carb meal. I'm sorry, cardboard flakes covered in 12 grams of sugar, which that's what the serving size is. 12 grams of sugar is two and a half teaspoons, just in case anybody's wondering and sausage and egg that comes from radiated uh, antibiotic grown meat and all of those things um, is not appropriate for any type of healing whatsoever and is actually causing illness. And so I told him this. And he said, well, you know, there's these parent meetings you can go to, parent advisory meetings, and they meet every once every six months. And I was like, no, you don't understand. I said, people are ready for an awakening. We're going to turn back around so I can watch the sunrise. People are ready for an awakening. People are ready for something new, something different. And people want the truth. And people are no longer going to stand by and watch y'all profit from their pain, suffering, illness, and death. And I said, if you guys don't want to be on the forefront of change, if you don't want to be the front runners of change, then that's fine. I'm more than happy to help you get to that journey. I'm more than happy to meet with you guys. I'm more than happy to do whatever I can to make this change possible and make this change happen. But if you don't want that, I'm more than happy to go to the media. I'm more than happy to blow this up way out of proportion. I'm more than happy to bring a spotlight in to identify all of the problems that exist within this hospital system that I personally know about from working at the neighboring hospital I worked there and now experiencing what you all are doing here. I said, we need change and we need it now. And I said, six months isn't gonna do me any good because then y'all are gonna give me the runaround. I said, I want this done in a matter of weeks. I want this done now. I said, I understand that your pi patient population is of poverty levels. I get that. I've been there on a whole foods plant-based diet. I just did a post about it at our Surfside Juice Company Instagram page. If you're interested, go check it out. I've done a post about, or I've lived the life of homeless, um, food stamps, of government assistance, of living a plant-based diet, because that's happened several times during our journey. And I guess that probably happened so that we were able to talk about it so that it wasn't like a wealthy person um, lifestyle. No, it's a choice. And you make sacrifices and you do what you have to do to get by because those foods equal your healing. Those foods equal your life. Those foods equal the ability to be able to wake your ass up at six o'clock in the morning and get here to see this beautiful sunrise. And so I said to him, I said, I understand that your patient population doesn't agree yet, but especially when the providers aren't telling them how to do this. I said, it is your job. It is your staff's job. It is your hospital's job to go into that patient room whenever somebody's got any type of illness that is happening to them. You walk in there and you say, you know, the best way to get out of this is a whole foods plant-based diet. Here's our menu. Let me show you all of the options that we have that are actually really delicious. And if they choose no, give them the standard diet. That's fine. We are all here making choices. We are all here living a free will life. I get that. But when the providers aren't the ones telling you how to eat, when the providers are the ones allowing you to just eat that way and not giving you any other option for information, well, I'm sorry, in my opinion, that's negligence. <laughs> so um, I told him all of this. 
And he's like, all right, well, I'm going to start talking to my staff and my team. And I'll get back to you, like, mid to late next week. And as next week came around, I was like, mother trucker, it is Thanksgiving. That man has no intention of getting back to me, ever. <laughs> and um, so I, I sat on it and I waited. And I wanted to send a nasty message last week, but I didn't. And so it was Wednesday yesterday. I called him back. And I was kind of in a pissy mood because I've honestly been eating too many chocolate hue candy bars they're fantastic but apparently the coconut sugar has <laughs> wreaked havoc on my mind body and spirit because I had this horrible like withdrawal headache from coconut sugar yesterday <laughs> um but I called him anyways because it needed to happen and I called and I said on his voice and I was like hey this is Melanie Brewer I talked to you about two weeks ago regarding my daughter Lillian Brewer who was a patient during this time and we talked about getting the diet system changed there. And I'd just love to continue that conversation. <laughs> if you could give me a call back, that would be great. My number is this. And I went on about my journey. Dude called back in like less than an hour. <laughs> and he was like, so you're one of the people that I'm planning to talk to. Happy 11-11 on the time. Um, you're one of the people I'm planning to talk to today. And I'm glad you called. And I was like, oh, very cool. And he's like, I'd love to have a sit down with you and have a further conversation with the head of patient relations, with the head of this department, with the head of this department, with the head of this department. I was like, <gasps> what? Blew my freaking mind, y'all, that I went out with the intent to make change. I went out with this attitude of like, <laughs> y'all gonna change whether you want to or not. And I went at it with professionalism and kindness, and y'all, is fucking working. It's fucking working. <sighs> Mind blown moment. So I guess this next week, I'm going to have a video conference call with all of the heads of all of these departments. My mom said I should make some notes. <laughs> um, if we need to sit down further and go from there, when Lily has her doctor's appointments, I'm going to go in for in-person meetings. This is fucking, like, never in my mind did I see this coming. Ugh. It's nuts. Um, so, yeah, I'm making changes happen just by choosing to want change, choosing not to back down, choosing to be, like, this kind of angry mama bear. There was one point in the first conversation that I had with this fellow where he tried to interrupt me, and I was like, no, you don't understand. You don't interrupt me. <laughs> And um, I went on and I just was like really gracious and kind and loving in the process, but also like, no, 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 we're not going to play your games of like passing this off and making this go away. Like this is going to happen. <sighs> so when God puts you in hard places, when God puts you in places that you didn't expect to be placed, um, when you get those uh, never say never moments in your life, look at it differently and look at it from a perspective of why am I here and what am I here to do about it? And what am I here to like change about this? Because I think that's part of my purpose here is like to change, make change in waves in the places that other people, I guess, have struggled or not wanted to. Um, so yeah, this definitely aligned with the last video I posted either yesterday or the day before of you can run but you can't hide. I said I would never return to the health industry and yet here I am. The death care industry I used to call it. Um, I said I would never use their services again and here I am using their services because I have to. <laughs> The world works in mysterious ways, God works in mysterious ways, but know that you have a purpose and know that we all have a purpose here and that we are like we're light workers initiating the change into new earth and that is coming through us. So with all that said, I hope you all have a fantastic day. I woke my ass up early so I could go get my horse done, see the sunrise, and so I'm going to go do all those things. I'm so grateful to be able to have a platform to share my experiences with others to help them on their journey and hopefully it's helping you on your journey in one way or another and these little tidbits of wisdom that are hidden through the seconds and moments that we get to stay here together I hope that somehow it touches your soul and it resonates with you and maybe this video helps to initiate some kind of change that you can make and know that it's possible to make these changes because I didn't think it was possible. I thought it was a lost fucking cause, y'all. Like, it was a burning ship sinking and I wasn't going to be anywhere near it. 
And now God's like, here you are, go on the burning ship, fix it, bye. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. That's uh, my life in a nutshell at the moment. There's still some things I'm not talking about and that's totally fine too. And you guys will be like, what? But uh, that'll happen in a later date. So with all that said, so much peace, so much love, so much namaste. Hasta la pasta.